If you've just found your way to this film, it's probably because there's pretty much no other advice anywhere on the topic of how to avoid long COVID. But with between 1 in 3 and 1 in 6 COVID infections going on to develop life-changing long COVID, it's really quite an important topic. One reason you've probably not found other information on the subject is because we don't yet have hard scientific evidence published in top journals. Although I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because no one's really asking the question, which is frankly absurd. But what we do have is over a million people in the UK alone have been suffering with long COVID and we can look at that group to see what they did right and what they did wrong so you can learn from those mistakes. In my patient-led research I've got data on over 10,000 long haulers across various different studies and that data is what I'll be leaning on in this film. So stick around and I'll list the five crucial tips that will help you avoid long COVID if you're in one of the at-risk groups. At-risk groups, you've probably not heard much of those in the media either. Some immediate misconceptions to be shot down. Long COVID isn't for people who were in poor health before. Diabetes, obesity and smoking aren't correlated at all with developing long COVID, for example. Your initial infection doesn't need to be severe either. Most long haulers had a mild initial infection. And vaccination doesn't stop you developing long COVID either, although it makes it slightly less likely. It takes down that 1 in 6 ratio to about 1 in 10. But what does raise your chance of developing long COVID after initial COVID infection? Who are these at-risk groups? Firstly, women, who outnumber men about 2 to 1. Age-wise, 30 to 50 are disproportionately represented, although kids can get long COVID too. What lifestyle factors make you high risk? Perhaps surprisingly, high activity levels. Do you live a full-on life? Are you working out hard in the gym or training for athletic endeavour? If so, your risk profile has just shot up. Personally, I was in the final stages of training for a marathon when I caught COVID, but any kind of physiological stress does seem to raise your chances. Have you ever had eczema, asthma or hay fever? This is called being atopic, and if so, your risk factor has just jumped tenfold. Are you allergic to animals? Cats, perhaps? If so, you're in this group too. Have you ever had post-viral fatigue before? If so, your risk has just jumped a hundredfold. What about if you've got or ever had fibromyalgia, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome? All of these conditions are drastically overrepresented amongst long haulers. For more on all of this, watch my film, Why You Might Get Long COVID, link here. So if any of these sound like you, you might want to be particularly careful during and after a COVID infection. So what should you do? Here's the five top tips. Number one, because it's the most important, convalescence. Do not rush back to work, exercise or caning it down the boozer. Anecdotally, it seems that most people's long COVID came on after a particular exertion, so I gathered some data on it, and over half of long haulers in this sample, which for reference was a sample made up of entirely asymptomatic or people who had a particularly mild infection they hadn't even identified as COVID at the time, um, so over half of those people could clearly identify what they believed to have caused the onset of their symptoms, and it was stress, or more frequently, exercise. How long after their initial infection did their long COVID attack? Another misconception is that there isn't a break between COVID and the onset of long COVID, but in most cases, people seem to recover, at least in part or perhaps fully, and feel fine for a period long before long COVID strikes. In this sample, over half found their long COVID came on over a month after their initial infection. And it was, of course, more often than not, caused by exertion or stress. So what's the lesson here? Well, take it easy for well over a month. Number two. Now, I have to say that I am not a medical professional and I am not advocating treatment, but you may consider, after consulting with your doctor, that taking low-dose aspirin might be a good idea. Recent research has shown that long COVID is characterised by microclots in the blood caused by hyperactivated platelets. These microclots cause havoc in peripheral circulation and gas exchange and subsequently metabolism and may be one of the primary mechanisms of disease. Have a look at these papers linked in the description for more details. 
Now, aspirin acts directly on the hyperactivated platelets and reduces clotting. It does, of course, have some side effects and contraindications, so please do have a look at the NICE guidelines linked in the description and do talk to your doctor before starting any medication. Number three, again, with all of the same disclaimers, including speaking to your doctor first, you might consider taking vitamin B3, also known as niacin, specifically in the nicotinic acid flushing form as opposed to nicotinamide. It's available over the counter in any chemist. Try to get the lowest dose tablet you can between 50 and 100 milligrams, as bigger doses can cause unpleasant flushing. Why niacin? Because one of the other key drivers of long COVID is dysfunctional metabolism. I speak to Dr. Aid Vensel in this film, who explains it in more detail if you're interested. Taking supplementary niacin helps restore the correct metabolic pathways and interrupts the dysfunctional ones. Does it actually work? Well, I did a statistical analysis in this film, which surveyed 812 long haulers and found niacin statistically improved symptoms with a p-value of 0.01, which is highly significant in a statistical analysis like this. Now, we haven't got study data on recently infected individuals taking aspirin or niacin and seeing what their rates of long COVID were versus a control group. But it stands to reason that if you can preemptively interrupt the cycles and cascades going on in long COVID, then you'll give yourself the best possible chance of avoiding it. Again, please do talk to your doctor before starting any new supplements or medication, and the NICE guidelines with information on side effects and important contraindications for niacin are linked to in the description. Number four. Have you ever been allergic to anything? Have you ever had eczema or asthma? Then you might want to consider talking to your doctor about antihistamines. These are long COVID specialists, Dr. Paul Glynn's first port of call for long COVID treatment based on this data from his published study. And if you want to know more about why they might help, please watch this film I made with Dr. Tina Pierce. Again, we're trying to calm down the immune reaction to the viral stimulus to avoid getting stuck in the inflammatory cycle that characterizes long COVID. Whilst prescription antihistamines like fexafenidine and famotidine are often prescribed for long haulers, you may do just fine with over-the-counter antihistamines available from any chemist. Again, please do speak to your doctor before starting any new medications or supplements. And number five, you may want to return to your old life as soon as possible. But be mindful that stress of any kind seems to raise the chances of developing long COVID. So you might want to consider postponing big stressful events if possible, especially if you're still not feeling 100% again yet. Are you, for example, still unusually tired after a normal day? Then if you're about to throw a massive party, perhaps put it back a month or two. Are you about to start a new endeavor or a new company or line of work? maybe consider doing it in a more incremental way. So look at your lifestyle in a holistic way and try to remove stresses as well as obvious hard exercise. When should you go back to it? Well, that's a choice you'll have to make, but every week extra you've given yourself of convalescence will have improved your odds of dodging long COVID. Don't do what I did and go back to daily running eight days after catching COVID and then continue doing it for the following month despite feeling worse and worse. If there was one thing I would change, it would be that. And for those of you who made full recoveries, perhaps there's some tips you'd like to add. In which case, put them in the comments and let's see if we can build up a proper knowledge resource. Links to all the films I mentioned are in the description too. So I hope this film has been helpful and best of luck to you because trust me, I'm knocking on two years of long COVID now and it has been no fun at all. So look after yourselves until next time.